Good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, appreciate that you chose to attend my talk. My name is Vasily. I work as a freelance developer, and uh, sometimes I blog a bit. And lately, I also started publishing advanced Android development courses. And uh, I attended the mobilization for the second year in a row, and I really like this uh, conference. And I'm super excited that uh, the team allowed me to bring you this topic that I wanted to talk about for more than a year. So today we are going to talk about um, offline mode in mobile applications. So just I want to uh, check the audience. Who is not Android developer? Not Android developer. Oh, cool. So hopefully this talk will be relevant to all mobile developers, uh, Android, iOS, IoT, you name it. Because I will not be talking about um, some Android-specific stuff and APIs, but rather I would like to introduce you to the, let's call it a theory of offline work, and uh, discuss the fundamental challenges involved in implementation of applications that can work offline. So what's the problem that we are trying to solve here? Well, usually our applications integrate with backend servers over internet. However, if you look at the global map of uh, network availability, so that this map is for 3G or better. Because basically on 2G, you can do very little, and some places don't have even 2G. They don't have network coverage at all. So we have places like United States and Canada, where it's approximately 95% coverage. And we have places like India and Africa, where the coverage is uh, less, le much less coverage. However, just uh, geographical coverage is not the entire problem that we are dealing with here. Because uh, we can also be in the United States, where the coverage is actually good, but enter the elevator or board the plane, where we will not have mobile connection. And we can have some uh, network failures localized to some area. And we, have, uh, we might have some network, global network failures for extended periods of time, especially if something happens and everybody try to uh, try to access the network. And uh, the user can be connected to Wi-Fi, but this Wi-Fi network might have actually captive portal on the way. So the user, the, the phone thinks that uh, it is connected to the internet, while in uh, fact it is not. And there are more cases where uh, the user will lose the connectivity. So in essence, our users, if you target global audience, and even in the most developed countries, it's also the case. Our users are constantly at risk of losing mobile connection. And guess who needs to cope with that? OK. So what happens when user loses, loses connection? Well, the application can enter an invalid state, for example, in finite progress indication. Well, we surely don't want that to happen, right? Or the application can crash. Well, that's another not good option. And uh, what I hate the most is when um, I try to do something and the application doesn't do anything. So the, the con there's no connection and the functionality fails, but it fails silently. So I prefer when the application crashes and at least I know that something bad happened rather than application not doing anything and leaves me wondering whether it works at all or whether I understand how it works. So it's usually an uninstall. So these three options are not optimal. Let's call it like that. And other option that we may employ is basically gracefully failing the functionality and letting user know that something bad happened. So we just basically do nothing. and show user a dialog that says, sorry, no internet connection, I cannot do that. And that's a valid option. And another valid option that we can employ is working offline. But what does it mean to work offline? Well, let me define it in my own words, because I actually haven't found any mm, standard definition for this thing. So working offline is when our application delivers value to the user without internet connection. And surely there are many, many applications that don't need internet connection at all to work. And in such cases, working offline is kind of trivial. 
So we are not going to discuss these cases, just forget about them. All this presentation assumes that your application actually requires internet connection to function. So if your mobile application doesn't need, for example, you develop some Compass application that doesn't need network, then it's trivially capable of offline work. All right. Now, let's become, let's, uh, let's get some math into the picture. Now, CAP, CAP theorem, is a math theorem. So it involves some kind of math, and it has mathematical proof. And I'm not going to um, show you this proof, and I'm even not going to rigorously define this theorem and its implications, because honestly, I'm not sure I'm capable of that. I'm not sure that I understand the math good enough. However, what I would like you to do is to acquire some um, um, intuition about this theorem, this thing, and its implication on offline applications. So the start here means that it's not mathematical, it's not rigorous, so don't quote me on that. And if there are mathematicians in the audience, uh, please hold yourself until after the lecture and then beat me up. So don't scream at me while I'm talking. Okay, so CAP theorem basically says that uh, we can get only two out of three guarantees. The first thing that we would like is consistency. And consistency is when our mobile application either shows the latest data available in the system, and when I say system, I mean the entire system, mobile application, backend servers, other mobile application, the entire pool of data that is available in our system. So our mobile application should either show the entire the most recent, the most up-to-date data, or it should uh, fail gracefully. It should tell the user, sorry, I cannot do that because I'm not connected. The second thing that we would like to have in our uh, applications is availability. Availability is basically that user can use the app. And the, thing, the third thing that we want to have is partition tolerance. And it's a bit difficult and tricky to um, explain partition tolerance, but think about it like application working when there is no network connection. Let's keep it that way, simple. And you can guarantee in your mobile application only two out of three. Now, there is a bit of misconception about CAP theorem. It doesn't mean that you always have two out of three. Sometimes you can get three out of three. So if your mobile application actually has internet connection, you don't need to choose. You get to get all of them. However, when internet, uh, when the connectivity is lost, then basically this last thing becomes your constraint. So when connectivity is lost, you need partition tolerance. And then you are left with choosing between consistency or availability. And again, in some cases, you might get both, but they are not guaranteed. So you need to choose which one of them you need you uh, guarantee in your applications. I know it's a bit fuzzy and high level, so let's deep dive into it. So what does it mean to choose whether either consistency or availability when there is no network? Well, I would like to show it like in a table. So if we choose consistency, which means that our application needs to either show the latest available state or show error indication. And in case of offline uh, application, when we don't have network connection, we can show latest available state in the system. So, so what we do, we show graceful failure with user uh, notification. That's what consistency means. You tell the user the truth. I can't reach my backend now, so sorry. And hopefully in your applications, you will do it more user-friendly than that, OK? Tell user something that he can actually understand what's going on, like, you need to retry, you need maybe to enable internet connection, you need to improve. Don't just leave him with this error. On the other hand, we can choose um, availability. So availability is basically saying, OK, we cannot reach the backend now. However, we would like to let user keep using our application and deliver a value to, to him or to her. So that's what offline work is about. And the example of offline work is a bit more complicated than I can fit in this small uh, area, but we will see a simple example later. So you basically, if you build application that will work when there is no internet connectivity, you need to choose either of these. 
And the implication of choosing the second one, availability, offline work, is that you compromise consistency. You compromise consistency. Again, I did not define consistency. I'm not going to define what it means to compromise consistency, but I would like all of us to kind of instinctively and uh, intu uh, our intuition to tell us that compromising consistency sounds like a bad thing to, to, to do. And it is really a bad thing because, first of all, it's technical risk because you will need to write a lot of code to compensate for compromising consistency. And second, and it's not talked nearly enough in my estimation, is that it's business risk. Business risk for the entire project. So again, a bit of intuition. Um, we'll do some puzzler, okay? I will, I will show you some flows, and you will need to vote whether this flow in your estimation is uh, suitable for being implementing in offline work. Okay, so let's say we have a mobile app that shows pictures. Who thinks that it's all right that I will be able to view my photos offline? Raise your hand. Okay, almost everybody. Who thinks that it might not be all right if I see my pictures and photos offline? No hands. Right, so generally speaking, it's all right, right? It's, 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 it's all right, it's my photos, I don't want them, and I don't need internet connectivity to view them. However, if I develop Snapchat, if I develop Snapchat, this might become a problem. So even in this simple case, you actually need to consider your business requirements. Because if you want to uh, promise the user that your photos will be lost in, I don't know, one minute, you cannot cache them offline. You cannot allow for that. OK, second case, reading journal articles. Who thinks that it's all right to read journal articles offline? Raise your hand. OK, who thinks that it's not? OK, so here I kind of agree with you. I cannot imagine a case where reading journal article offline will uh, pose any problem. OK, so the next case, weather forecast. I want to know, for example, when I flew to Lodge, I, I, I looked up weather, and it said no rain, so I didn't take my umbrella. Thank you very much. And uh, so weather forecast, who thinks that weather forecast is, is all right doing offline? Almost no hands. Who thinks that weather forecast is not good doing offline? Very many hands. Good. I think that weather forecast is a very tricky question, because if I do weather forecast for a week ahead, for a week ahead, then I don't mind serving the same information to the user for a couple more hours if he's offline or she's offline, because what changed? And what risk do I pose? However, many people, many developers don't understand that some people use weather apps in real time to monitor things like um, natural disasters. So you open weather app and you look up, where is this tornado going right now? And, and, and you don't want to, let, to give your user information from about an hour ago, because that might actually risk his, uh, his or her life. And that's an actual concern in application, in mass applications that do weather forecasts, that give you weather forecasts. All right, next one, sending email. Who thinks that sending email is actually all right to do offline? Not very many hands. Who thinks that sending email might be a problem doing offline? Several hands. Well, come to me later. Please tell me what you see the problem is, because for me, oh, OK, so sending email. So for me, if I ever download email client and I try to send email and it shows me an error dialog, sorry, you are not connected to the internet, that's an immediate uninstall and one star rating. Because I didn't I write all this long email to get error notification. Please cache it and deliver it on the best effort basis. So I don't think that there is a problem, but if you think there is, let's talk about that. That's interesting. Real-time stock exchange trading. Who thinks that trading real stock offline is a good idea? OK, two, two people. Who thinks that it's a bad idea? OK, almost everybody. And again, uh, please come to me and tell me why it's all right. Because uh, I think that if you trade stock offline, for example, you let user buy stocks and update it one hour after one, after one hour after it happened, then you are risking like um, 
Um, do you know the story of Knight, Copi Knight Capital Group? So Google it, Knight Capital Group. That's a company that lost about $500 million in one day. So Google it. And I, in, my opinion, in my estimation, if you allow your users to trade stocks offline, you will uh, most probably uh, repeat their experience. And emergency reports. Anyone thinks that emergency report offline is a good idea? OK. <laughs> you will need to explain yourself, surely. But anyway, when, when, if you write an app that allows people to report emergencies, you want to let these people know immediately whether the report was received or not. You cannot catch that report. If I, write, if I, if I click that I'm in distress, I want to know whether help is on the way. And I want to know it immediately. So you want 100% consistency if you, if you, if you develop an uh, emergency report application. So this table kind of shows us two things. First, it's not trivial to decide whether applications should uh, support offline work or not. It's business consideration, and business should actually think about that and think about business risks involved in uh, serving users with what we will see later to be basically cached data. And second is that one application can actually implement several of these flows, right? So what it shows us is that it's not right to talk about offline capable applications. Rather, we should talk about applications capable of offline flows. So most applications would like to do things like sign in, sign in and sign up when there is internet connection. However, this doesn't mean that you cannot implement other flows that support offline work. So you need to actually sit and think thoroughly about the flows in your application and understand, all right, this flow, I will do it offline. And this one, I will not allow offline work. I will show the user error notification. OK. <clears throat> now I would like to get a little closer to the implementation details because currently we were at the high level of abstraction. So offline work is basically favoring availability over consistency. And now let's talk about a bit about implementation. So I'm going to use something that's called UML um, flow diagram, blackout, sorry, some kind of UML diagram. So vertical axis is time. And that's the lifetime or mo of mobile application, and that's the lifetime of the server. So when the application is off online, user asks for some kind of data. He wants to see some screen that shows some kind of data. The application will send a network request to the server, and the server will respond with the response, and we will serve the user the response. Nothing complicated, just a standard flow. However, in addition to serving the response to the user, we might, in addition, actually cache the response locally. We might store the information that we obtain from the servers in a local database. And this will allow us, when the application goes offline and the user asks for the same data again, to actually just query the database and serve the user with the database with the data stored locally on the device without contacting the server. And that's what I define as downstream offline work. And if you think about that for a moment, there, when the application is offline and it serves stale data and it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, contact the server for details, it basically goes, uh, loses its consistency. In the application, you will, you will not know if the data is being updated on the server meanwhile. So that's the place where whenever you do that, you're basically at risk of entering inconsistent sta state. And you need to account for that. So downstream offline, offline work is basically storing the data obtained from the server locally. OK. What's upstream offline work then? Well, the same chart. Vertical axis is time. And we'll start with offline. And user performs some kind of action that actually changes the state of the system. Now, we don't have internet connection, so the application caches 
stores the details of this action in the local database. And if the user asks for this data again, or this data is used in some other flow in the application, then the application will serve the user with all the data it has cached up until that moment. And in addition, this data will have all the side effects of this latest uh, user's action. So the application locally is responsible for actually applying user action on the data. So the application becomes the server. And the server doesn't know about this action. And then when the connection is restored, we usually want to sync users' actions to the backend. And the backend will tell us whether this sync was successful or not. And why will this sync be unsuccessful? And that's a crucial question. Why will a sync, sync just uploading some user actions to the server, will be unsuccessful? And the reason why, is that, why this is the case is because during this period, server becomes inconsistent. So in our system, and again, system defined as the server in, in, in all my mobile clients, we have some state that the server is not aware of. So now the mobile client knows about something and server doesn't. So server lost its consistency. And what it means is that theoretically, when we come to sync users' actions, there might be conflicts with other updates that happened when the server was inconsistent. And now the server will need to implement the logic that arbitrates between these conflicts and decides what to do. So a simple example would be, for example, I have e-commerce application and I allow my users to add uh, products to cart when offline. So I add product on my mobile device and then I go to web and I don't see that product in my cart. So I click add to cart on my web application. And later, mobile syncs the data to the server. So now server needs to decide. He sees that I added product to cart on, on web and now he, I tell him that I also added on mobile. So what happens? Do I have one product in my cart or do I have two products in my cart? Or maybe server must notify me and I must make the decision whether to keep one or two products in my cart. And that's a relatively simple case, but as, as you implement more offline flows, these questions become more complicated and the logic to arbitrate between possible conflicts become very, very difficult. So server becomes inconsistent when you do upstream mobile work, and it's a major pain um, in the neck. So upstream mobile work is basically storing uh, uh, state changes locally on the devices and syncing them to the server later. And let's just, I want to press this topic a little bit more so we un really understand what's the scope of this consistency loss. So here we have the server, and it has several clients, and not necessarily mobile, I just made a mistake. Some of them might be web clients, some of them might be other servers. And let's say that I do some offline, I do some action in my application while it's offline. And this action now basically stored only in this single mobile device. And it's not synced to the server. So what happens? Well, what happens is, is that the entire system except when this, single, this one single de device becomes potentially inconsistent. So all actions that happen in the system after this single action might cause some conflicts, might cause some problems. And if you don't account for these conflicts, then <laughs> you can cause massive data corruption in your system and uh, make all this, uh, the entire system unstable. And Really, the problem is much bigger than that because that's what happens when just one this this one single mobile device performs some offline action. But each of them, let's say, can do that. So when this one uh, afterwards performs some offline action, then again this device becomes inconsistent too. So offline capable system that is capable of upstream offline work and has uh, enough users, big users base will basically 100% of the time be inconsistent. So there will be no point at which you can say, all right, 
the server or group of servers know anything about all the data in the system. And the system needs to be able to handle this situation and resolve all the types of potential conflicts that arise from that. And if you don't take care of that, then, well, either data corruption or crashes or bad user experience. So that's the implication of upstream offline work. And we have this notion of full offline work, which is basically downstream and upstream. And here's the question, how hard can it be to implement full offline work? Who knows who is that? Who knows the name of this person? One, two, okay. That's Dan Liu, and I very much hope that I don't mispronounce his name. He is very uh, famous in Android community, one of the most respected Android developers, and he works for Trello. Everyone knows Trello, uh, tasks management system. So Dan Liu uh, wrote a series of posts that he called, uh, that in, in which he described how they implemented offline capability in Trello. So take 10 seconds to, to read that. And the, and, the, and the part that is really important is that for the past year and a half, we've been working hard to enable offline mode in Trello. And that's the, 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 that's the time scales that we are talking about. So not all offline capable applications are as complex as Trello. However, if we talk about downstream offline, you can get it done several days or several weeks, depending on the complexity of your application. If we are talking about upstream offline work, then you are basically going into woods, and you need to prepare for that. So it's really, really time-consuming to take uh, to implement full, fully capable offline uh, application. And uh, if you read that, they worked for a year and a half, and he wrote he wrote um, seven uh, quite long posts about some of the issues that they encountered. And I've got about. Um, 20 minutes left, less, to explain you how to do that. So <laughs> hold to your chairs, guys. No, I'm not going to try to do that. It's, it's simply impossible. But let's ask another question. Does your application really need to work offline? And here I will rant a bit. It's my personal rant. It's, not, not, it's, not, yeah, it's very controversial. But it's very uh, popular saying, at least in Android community, that we need to do offline first. So basically, when you plan your application, when you start developing your application, you need to think about offline work from day one. And I would say that that's, given that we know that at least some business flows are not suitable for offline work at all, I would say that this statement is a bit too absolute. So how do you know if your application works offline? And the answer to this is actually, it depends, okay? It depends on a lot of things. So I would like to list some of the uh, things that I personally think about when people ask me about offline capability. First of all, do you have a real business case for offline work? A real business case, a real need. Do your users ask for offline capability? Do you have the resources needed to implement offline uh, downstream cop capable application? Again, that would mean on some projects several days. On some projects, that might be several weeks of work, and maybe even more if it's something really big. Now, do you have the resources to implement upstream offline capability, which is like very, very complex and much more complex than just downstream? And moreover, do you have the buy-in from all the teams required to implement upstream offline capable system. Because as we've seen, really when you go upstream offline capable, you need to implement a lot of logic on the server side. Your server basically needs to uh, become aware of the, of, of the fact that the entire system can be inconsistent. So do you really have this buy-in from server guys? And the last question is, OK, let's say all of these are true. Given that you analyzed and you know that it will cost you a lot, is it really worth it? Because in many cases, it's, it will not. In many cases, what you see as absolute mandatory feature that 
five users asked for might cost you several hundred thousand of dollars to implement, and that's at least you need to consider that that may be not a good invest investment of your development resources. All right, so we are coming close to, to, to the end of the application, and I would like to leave you with something that can actually help you if you go and try to implement um, full offline support in your Android and in your applications. Because as you've seen, I didn't say anything about Android. It's this is a general fundamental issues and, and, and challenges that you will face in any system that is distributed and you work in works on the internet. So it will be true for Android, iOS and for um, any kind of IoT device if you have one. Okay, so first of all, that series of posts that uh, Dan wrote is the best resource to understand the complexity of, of the work that you might need to do. Because things that you didn't even think about, so for example, uh, who attended the talk before, before this one uh, of Piotr about offline work in Android? Anyone? Okay, not too many people, but that was actually a very good talk. And entire, let's say, 40 minutes, Piotr talked about how challenging is that to just understand whether your device has actual internet connectivity. And it's really not a trivial task. It really takes time and, and, and thought, and, and there are many uh, edge cases, just to understand whether you have internet connectivity. But then you get other kinds of issues that Dan uh, wrote about. For example, if you... Usually, right, we, we all have uh, uh, some kind of ID on, on our objects, right? If we have card item, then this card item will have some kind of ID. And this ID is generated by the server. But if you add items to card offline, then this ID needs to be generated by the mobile application. And then, at some point, the, you need to exchange this ID. So you need to make server aware of this new card item, and the server will assign it a different ID, and you need to somehow exchange those two IDs without causing havoc in your, uh, in your mobile app. And it's a real difficult problem to, to, to tackle. So if you ever find yourself, and regardless whether you're an Android developer or anyone else, <coughs> just read this series of posts. And the second thing that I will mention, and unfortunately I will not have enough time to even scratch the surface of this topic, but uh, there is an architectural pattern which is relatively popular, relatively uh, known uh, among backend developers, which is called uh, event sourcing. And what event sourcing says basically is that we represent the state of our system, of our application, let's say, not as a final state. For example, if I, have, if I add a product to cart and then I make them two, then if I just normalize this information in my database, I will have pro two products in my cart. But if I use event sourcing, I will not store this information in this way. I will store it as I first event, I added, I added one product to cart, and second event, I added second product to cart. And I know that it might not look as a big deal, and it might even, if you think about it, sound like a, a bit of overhead. In fact, a lot of overhead of development. But that's what you need if you want to implement uh, fully co uh, offline capable applications. Because think about it that way. If I add two products to cart, and now I try to sync this change to my server as two products added to cart, and one of them fails, for example, one of them isn't av available in the stock anymore, then the server has no other option but reject both of these additions. But if I actually store this information as a sequence of events, and I sync these events separately to my backend, then backend has a chance to actually reject just one of them, the one that he cannot serve. And again, it's like, very gross and very undetailed, and, and I don't do justice to this architecture pattern. It's actually quite complicated, but it is what you need if you want to implement fully uh, capable offline application. 
Um, so yes, Google for that, and uh, maybe another talk about event sourcing in mobile is coming our way. All right, now 30 seconds of self-promotion. As I told you, uh, I started doing uh, advanced Android development courses, and I have three of them right now. And this I'm aimed at professional developers, that these courses are not for beginners. And so if you are interested in unit testing or dependency injection or Android architecture, and when I say architecture, I will try to convince you that basically architecture is not about frameworks and libraries, and there is much more fundamental things to architecture than that, then go check out my courses. The links you can find on my blog, and you can also find my articles on my blog. So um, some of them highly controversial. So if you don't like to read controversial stuff or you are not up to some conspiracy theories about Android future, don't read my blog. Otherwise, give it a try. And with that, we have several minutes for questions. Hello. Uh, actually, it's not really a, a question. It's that uh, I, I partly agree with what you said. I've been doing offline uh, conversion of my app for the last year. And what I believe it's hard in my in my experience uh, because I agree with I do, I would say like 85 percent of what you said uh, w uh, becoming an offline experience uh, it's complicated if you want to do like nail everything uh, from day one it also I agree it takes a lot of work but I don't think. Uh, it is necessary that much additional work of course you need to uh, rethink. Uh, your business cases, if maybe some apply, some uh, maybe are impossible to, to use in offline. But I think that maybe a, a small increments, I think what uh, the problem with the Trello issue was that they wanted to make a whole online only application into a, an offline application. And that's uh, really hard mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of time. But I think you can do incremental improvements over parts of your application that might be offline for uh, it, uh, they weren't online uh, they were online at the beginning and you turn them into into offline but also that the the experience in offline you want to give it's uh, up to where you want to stop because uh, working on becoming offline in a part of the application, we started to find, like you said, uh, more complexity in how we had to handle uh, these offline cases. What happens if uh, this person uh, creates this uh, element and then he performs a save over it and it uh, hasn't talked to the server, the consistency problem you, you talk. But I think uh, there's a moment where you have to stop and say, okay, this is how much offline we are going to do. And it also uh, is interesting that uh, you mentioned that uh, obviously this is a this is a challenge for uh, multi-user, uh, multi-concurrent user uh, application. But maybe not all applications uh, have uh, several users working over the same over yeah. the same object objects. Otherwise, uh, it, was, it was a great talk. Thank you very much. I think. By the way, I agree with everything that you said. So. It's like no, there is no any kind of disagreements. Yes, if you implement some note-taking app, for example, and you are the only user who creates the notes and reads the notes, then you can drastically reduce the amount of work you need to invest for offline. So it really depends on business cases and also what you said about you need to where to know where to stop. Again, I think the the right way to work is by flows. You just define flows. You 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 rate them by 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 the pri priority and you work off that list because if you try to do the entire application and by the way if you actually read that this post you will see that Trello also they encountered some issues and they had to do some um, trade-offs so that this post were work in progress so they didn't finish uh, their offline implementation so yes but I uh, these are very important points so my question is about um, uh, generated IDs. You mentioned that there is a problem in uh, generating IDs on the client and generating them on the server. And I would like to hear exactly why, because we actually have that, and it's never been a problem. 
you send an ID to the server that you generate in the client if you want to. If you don't send it, the, the, client, the server will generate it for you. And given the size of the GUIDs that you actually handle on the server, collision is pretty much impossible. So I would like to know what is the problem you, over, you see on uh, client-generated IDs? Okay, the problem is not collision. You every, every each time you you use any kind of ID, please use UUID. Okay, so don't use integers or something like that. Yes, I agree that there will be no collision, but the problem is uh, a bit subtler than that. Um, okay, it's maybe you come after that, and I will draw schematically. The problem is not when you generate one ID. The problem is that you have basically relations between entities. Okay, and then uh, you want to start to build, to build these entities, and furthermore, you want to um, uh, start um, syncing these changes. For example, you can have multiple changes of, on one entity offline. So you create the entity, you update it several times, and then you start uploading these changes to the server. So other clients can, can also start using that, but this entity can have relationship with other entities on your on your device, and some of these entities, server might not know about them yet. Okay, so you, it, it's it's really it's a good question, and it's much easier to to explain visually than than in things. But yes, um, collision is not the reason that you need to exchange uh, IDs, and uh, always use your UID even if you don't have this offline capable application. Last question. There's two mugs already gone, so if you ask a question, it got to be good in order to get mug. So <laughs> you go, you get both. Good question. Okay, no questions. All right, guys. Thank you very much.